members of the media community, children, the general public, ladies and gentlemen. I am deeply honored to present this statement, the Uganda Women's Civil Society Organization Statement on the Use of Excessive Force. Over the past few weeks, we have witnessed a series of disturbing events in which we've seen the state and its law enforcement agencies respond in a brutal and often excessive manner to citizens' demands for government action to address increased prices, cost of living, growing poverty, inequality in distribution of resources, and corruption. During this period, the police and other security agencies have sought to quell demonstrations under the Walk to Work campaign using live ammunition and copious amounts of tear gas, resulting in loss of life, injuries to persons, and destruction of property. We have seen our sisters, brothers, and children affected in various ways with many still nursing injuries in hospital and others arrested and imprisoned, some without charge to date. In some incidents, sections of the public have exploited the volatile situation to break the law, further spawning a downward spiral of violence, both in Kampala and in other towns of country. The shooting to death of two-year-old Juliana Narwanga in Masaka seven-month pregnant Miss Larueno in the stomach, and the brutal arrest and treatment of demonstrators and some bystanders are but some of the horrific incidents that have shocked us and invoked an ease and a range of reactions from various sections of Uganda's population and international actors, including the Interreligious Council of Uganda, the Uganda Law Society, and the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. While the state has a duty to ensure law and order, the state is also obliged to respect, promote, protect, and fulfill the rights of its citizens as enshrined in the 1995 Constitution and other regional and international treaties to which Uganda is signatory. In attempting to fulfill its obligations in the last few weeks, the state has instead used excessive force, resulting in the infringement of some of the fundamental rights enshrined in Chapter 4 of the Constitution, including the right to life, the freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, freedom of movement, the right to access prompt, fair, and timely justice, and freedom from inhuman and degrading treatment. We are deeply concerned about the suffering that has been occasioned by the escalating food prices and fuel prices. Many women, men and children are subsequently unable to meet their basic needs and enjoy their basic right to food, education, health and shelter. We, while we recognize the myriad of causes behind the current crisis, we also wish to express our profound disappointment with our government's indifference exhibited by the lack of urgent action to curb the situation and apparent disregard of pressing priorities in allocation of government expenditure. We, as women in civil society, are hereby convened to register our deep concern and condemnation on the use of excessive force and, and by the police force and other security agencies and the subsequent escalating violence and to call upon the state to take critical measures to address the key issues and concerns raised by the public so as to avert a national crisis. In particular, we wish to register a deep concern of the following. Number one, the use of excessive force and especially the use of live ammunition to quell demonstrations 
indiscriminate physical assaults on civilians, spraying of vast amounts of tear gas in closed spaces, including cars, schools, dispensaries, and homes, occasioning loss of life and property, severe injuries and pain among innocent children, bystanders, those at work, and urban dwellers. We are greatly concerned that rather than enjoy state protection, citizens are instead preoccupied with defending themselves against the wrath of the state. Number two, the brutality of officers of the Uganda Police Force and other security operatives in handling the walk to work campaign, which amounted to poor, inhuman, and degrading treatment for those that were arrested and affected. Three, the intimidation of human rights defenders who have spoken out on various issues of concern, including the de declining space for civic engagement. Four, we are solidly concerned about censorship of the media and the curtailing of press freedom and freedom of expression, including intimidation and security threats to journalists and media houses carrying out their duty as a watchdog of the state and provider of information to the public. We are concerned about the increased erosion of the independence of the three arms of government and lack of accountability on the infringement of rights. The actions and decisions of some judicial officers have cast doubt in the minds of the public on whether justice is indeed being done. We are equally concerned that contrary to the public appeal for the perpetrators of violence to be brought to justice, the Minister for Internal Affairs has instead defended the use of brutal force. Such responses from government risk promoting impunity. We are also concerned about the increased militarization of the state and use of armed forces to enforce law and order and to quell peaceful protests, which heightens risks of violence, violent conflict, and will affect the entire population of Uganda, including men, women, and children. We, as women of civil society organizations, are hereby calling upon the government to strongly respect, promote, protect, and fulfill the rights of its citizens as enshrined in the Constitution and exercise restraint in fulfilling its obligations. We want government to recognize that the language of force and violence alienates more than 50% of Uganda's population, the women and it diminishes our initiative to exercise our civic duties within the public sphere. We are calling upon government to take proactive measures to address broader social justice issues and ensure that key concerns voiced by various sections of the public are addressed effectively. We demand for strong policy measures to address issues of food security, unemployment, health and education. We also demand for government's resolve to ensure greater transparency in the allocation and management of public resources, reduction of excessive government expenditure, and equitable distribution of benefits of economic growth to all the citizens of this country, Uganda. We hereby will be soon submitting an appeal to the government and to the international community through the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the situation of human rights defenders, requesting for thorough, prompt, and impartial investigations into the human rights violations committed by the security forces. Finally, we are calling upon the public to remain peaceful in the pursuit of various rights and to desist from violent actions. We are also calling upon uh, we're calling for national dialogue between key parties and urge all stakeholders, including the regional and international community, to intervene in ensuring peace and justice prevailing in Uganda. Dated 9th May by the Uganda Women's Civil Society Organizations. I thank you.